Right, good morning. Wiggle here. Working on our 3,000 gallon water tank and I'm getting it insulated. So I'm going to show you what I'm doing. I put a pressure treated 2x8 band around the bottom here. And uh, I use one inch galvanized conduit, pounded a foot in the ground, put some uh, metal screws through the 2x8s into the stakes, and then I leveled this 2x8 band all the way around. That's going to be my foundation for this. It's basically just a skin we're putting around this um, tank, so doesn't have to have a whole lot of support the tank's gonna hold it and I don't really care if it moves the skin moves much as long as it stays put and so this is R10 two and a half two yeah two and a half inch uh, foam XPS foam so I'm putting t three other bands and these are just regular um, two by fours Got them for a dollar piece Home Depot on the uh, coal rack. Can't believe it. They're stud length, 92 and 5 eighths, buck a piece. I bought 160 of them. <laughs> I don't care if they're dirty and moldy, let me have them. So anyway, um, I did a 10-sided polygon around this. Uh, I just held the board up there, looked like what would work. You can kind of see the, I need enough room for my stakes. And I was low on pieces of wood. I was using all scrap, so the angle pieces I cut at 31 and a half. And the oh, get out of here, chickens! I come in here and eat my foam. So I got to hurry with this. I come in here and start pecking at my foam. I hate hate them when they do that. And then I I had uh, straight pieces. I cut 28. It's like 100 and. 20 inches around this thing about so I just cut it into 10 10 sections and the angle is 36 degrees so where I use a straight piece I used 36 degree angle but you can also use two 18s and butt those together just depends so I'm gonna wrap it with this uh, two and a quarter inch this has an 18 degree bevel on it cut it on the table saw and you gotta be careful. It's a little tricky because it likes to bounce around and this blade likes to grab it. And you gotta be careful when you cut it. It gets out of hand quickly. So maybe a skill saw might be the way to go. I'm gonna still use my table saw. Just gotta be careful. So I'm gonna uh, wrap. I'm using the four feet high. Putting the second band at four feet. Or the first band and then the second band will be at eight feet. And then I have a third band that will go at the very top. That will be for the roof. I'm wrapping it in, it's about three quarter inch oak boards. This will be the skin of it. So I will lift the board off the ground a little bit and then it'll tie all these bands together. I'll screw through this out, outside board and to hold the bands all together. And then up there will be a band at the top for the roof. And I'll show you that later. I'll also show you what I'm going to do with this uh, inside a box, kind of like a well house to cover all my plumbing. It's going to have to come out from the tank. So I'm going to do uh, one layer around at four feet and then another layer around at eight feet. And I'll have the little pieces to put in. When I put it in the roof, I'm going to put unfaced attic insulation on top of the tank and I'm also going to insulate the roof with the Right as I build the roof, I'll just put the insulation right underneath the, the metal roofing. And I might be disassembling some old chicken heaters to make the roof with. We'll just see how it goes. It's going to be a gazebo type roof, 10 sided. So, um, yeah, in the corners here, I'll wrap them with that aluminum tape I have here. Just various old. This stuff's really tough, I'll probably use that, but I also have just some old rolls of this. That will close in my seams. 
And then I'm going to get some uh, vermiculite. See, I have this gap here. There's going to be gaps behind the insulation. I'm just going to drop vermiculite down in there to help with the insulation. Just loose, coarse vermiculite, like for they use it in concrete work. Not garden vermiculite, but the other kind, mineral. Just it's, it's also coated with something. But I'm going to put all that in behind the tank. That way, I won't like push on the tank. It's soft and it's light, so it won't be deforming the tank or anything. It'll just kind of fill that void help keep this and I'm hoping in zone 7 here that the uh, ambient water temperature coming out of the ground 56 degrees or whatever 54 to 56 whatever it is I'm hoping that this R10 will the thermal mass will just keep it warm enough and I might put a heater in there if I have to because it's obviously going to ice at the top so if I put a heater at the top and keep that water from freezing at the top then it might ice around the edges a little bit, but I don't think so. I think it'll try to ice at the top, so the heater will prevent that. But a lot of years, we don't even have the pond freeze over or something. We get just a little ice around the edges, so I don't ever think this thing's going to freeze solid unless we get this mini ice age they're talking about. So anyway, this was a little bit of a challenge to figure out how to get this done, but this is how I'm going to insulate it. And I will show you more... Um, video as I get further along in the process I just wanted you to see yeah I uh, mentioned I use four inch deck screws in the joints here I did more on the foundation than this I just put three and it's not all perfect I mean I just to get the get it perfect it would have just taken forever it doesn't have to be perfect I just need, need it to stay up and hold the insulation and, uh, yeah, when I'm done, I'll wrap it with Tyvek. That will go before I put the barn board on. So, I'm going to get some help so the chickens don't attack my foam as I work. And we'll get this all get going. I'll show you some more. I also will show you later on, if you're interested, I will show you the bathroom and kitchen over there that I've been working on. It's been a while since I've updated um, that that door is to off-grid bathroom that door to an off-grid kitchen tied together with the bathroom for a number of reasons so I'm gonna use a wood stove for heating hot water I'm also gonna use solar hot water some interesting things so I got it closed in which is most important so I will also up you on that later. Right now I'm going to try to get this foam on and get the Tyvek on so I don't have to worry about the attack of the chickens. So, talk to you later. Alright, we got the uh, insulation on, the top band on. The, top, uh, the very top band is just floating up there waiting for the roof. Over here is the, for the pipe, I gotta get some fittings and so I'm gonna leave that. We're gonna make a little like well house for that. I'm gonna be working on just the skin and then the roof. So, cut the angles on the foam and if we had a gap we didn't like, we just cut some little slivers of foam, triangular shaped and pushed them in there and taped it up with HVIC, HVAC um, tape. It's got the polyester reinforcement. So that's the R10 insulation around the thing. And then when we start putting the barn board on, it's going to suck it all in. And I'm expecting that that foam is going to bend a little around in the middle of hitting the tank. So that is not going to go away. But this part I think is going to suck in like that. I'm putting a number of screws in the barn board and it'll just kind of suck it all in and kind of find its place. I think it'll be pretty tight. Pretty well insulated. So that's that for now. We're going to put the tie back on. A few pieces of barn board. Hold it on. And then I can go mill some more lumber.